Coming up on The Amazing Art Show, get your appetites ready for extreme hamburgers. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and we have got a great project for you today, extreme hamburgers. So, I want you to think back. You've probably like at least clicked through it sometime when you're watching TV, and you've seen those extreme cooking shows where they have these challenges, you know, they've got like chopped, there's cake ones, they're, they're making all of these different gourmet foods. Today, you are going to be a gourmet cook, but you're going to be doing it on paper. Don't eat it though. This is a little different, but you're still going to be very creative. All right, so let's talk about what you're going to need today. You are going to need all different kinds of construction paper, all different colors, um, you can even pick up pieces if maybe mom scraps, she might even have some that have a texture to them. So this one's got like little ridges in it, which works great for some of the things that we're going to do today. So just lots of different colors of paper. Um, since you know we're making a burger, you know for sure you're at least going to need some brown for the meat patties. If you're not into hamburgers, you could do a turkey burger, you could do a chicken burger. Um, so any kind of paper. You might also want to pick up um, tissue paper. Also works really well for a couple of the things we're going to do. Um, you're going to need a long and narrow dark sheet of paper. Um, it's up to you to kind of pick your color. I like black because it really makes everything else pop really nice. So um, this is about you know eight inches by I don't remember probably twelve somewhere around in there. Uh, markers. You're going to need some cardboard, so if mom or dad has some kind of a box that you can, you just need a little bitty bit of it, so you're going to grab some of that as well. Um, scissors, hole punch, glue, some really good glue will be very handy for you today. Also, some other kind of little more strange objects that you might need is some white yarn. If you don't have white yarn, Anything white, like um, white twist ties, white pipe cleaners, anything like that would work great. Um, also, from the kitchen, if you could get um, beans, like dark beans, rice works really well. Um, different ty types of texture and things like that, the, uh, things that you could find in the kitchen work great for this project. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we are making a collage today, which means we're going to be taking all different kinds of paper and objects and things, and we're going to be putting them together to create a new image or a new picture. And so we are working towards an extreme burger. So this is not necessarily a burger that you would eat, because I know you kids, and you're very picky. And so a lot of you, even just the normal things, you're like, oh, I don't like that. So I want you to think creatively. This isn't something you're going to eat, so you can make it kind of silly and fun. But the things that you put on there, they need to make sense in the fact that they're edible. So you could have gummy bears on your extreme gourmet hamburger. You could have ice cream. You could have eggs, avocados. You could have any kind of vegetable you could possibly think of. So be creative in kind of coming up with what your ideas are going to be. And usually what I like to do is I kind of make a little list so that I know that I get everything that I want to have on there. Um, so kind of be thinking about that first. You might even want to make a list. You want, not counting the top bun and the bottom bun, you want about 10 to 15 items that will go in between. All right? So to start things off, I want you to think about a table or a tray or a mat of some surface that is going to be your beginning starting off point. So for mine, I decided that I really wanted to do, when I think about hamburgers, it makes me think of like a checkerboard um, kind of tablecloth. I don't know why, it just does. And so um, that's what kind of got me going. So I decided that that's what I wanted mine to be. So. Um, a lot of my kids in class, they made trays out of paper. They did all kinds of different things. This is just what I decided to do. So basically what I did is I took white paper and red paper and I cut it into strips. You might get mom or dad to help you because they need to be pretty straight. And then basically I, with the white, I just did tape all across the edge here. And then I took the reds and I wove them through. So it was just over, under, over, under. So once I get it in there, then... 
all I have to do is I'm going to bring it over to my black sheet of paper that I'm working on today and I'm going to lay it on here and I want you to think of a creative way that you could do it. So I wouldn't do it, meaning you could just do it plain and simple straight like this or you could get more creative with it and kind of turn it at an angle which is what I would like to do. So I am actually going to kind of pull mine about there and then what I want to do is I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to flip it here and then using my pencil I'm going to trace along the edges so that I'm, ba I'm basically making a pattern so that then all of this I know will fit onto my paper correctly. So then once I've gotten this done, all I'm going to do is you're just going to cut along your line. You want to kind of hold everything together as you're cutting. And the only tape that I have so far on my paper is just that top part that I had that was kind of holding everything together. And But the good news is kind of once you've woven the papers together, they hang on to each other pretty good. So you really don't have to do too much more taping or anything like that. So cut it out as best you can. And let's see, am I still attached there? Okay. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it back over and put this back over here. And then all I need to do is I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to put some back here. I should have laid this down because this is my glue that likes to take forever and a day before it decides to come out. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to lay this down on top of here. It dries clear, so anything that kind of squeezes through will be just fine. All right. Now, I've got a little corner over here where I don't have um, any paper, and I'm not going to stress out about that. Um, if I really wanted to get technical, I could come back in and fix it with some of my scraps that are left over, but um, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to take my tissue paper, and you know how sometimes when you get like a really good juicy hamburger, they wrap it all up in this brightly colored paper and then it's like a little present when you get it and you open it all up and it's got your wonderful hamburger in there. So I'm going to kind of emulate that with my little tissue papers here. And I didn't have a piece of tissue paper that was big enough so I'm just going to use two. So typically by the time you get it, it's already kind of wrinkly so I'm going to make mine wrinkly. And then I'm just going to kind of put it together and then once my burger's on there you won't be able to tell that it's two different pieces anyways. And so same kind of thing, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down. And on this, instead of, you know, usually when I'm telling you guys to glue down things, I am like, get it glued down really good, dot, dot, not a lot, but get it glued down good. This, you can actually, it kind of looks really good if you leave some of the pieces sticking up a little bit. So I'm going to kind of do mine like that. But I do want to get a little bit of glue on these edges because I don't want them to be flying all around. Alright, so I've got that down. Alright, so next is I've got my cardboard and I've actually already done my pieces but I'm going to show you. I had a piece of cardboard and it's about like this and then I just basically drew kind of an oval shape on it and then I drew a line through the middle of it. So I've got an oval with a line through the middle. Cut it out and basically I end up with, you know, this kind of a shape. All right, so then once I've done that, the next thing that I want you to do is you're going to take it and you're going to kind of bend the cardboard, bend it back and forth, back and forth, and then you're going to be able to tear off that top layer that, and it will kind of reveal all these little grooves that are in the cardboard, and we want those to show. This, this project is a lot about texture, so we're really, we're trying to emulate the texture that you might have on your burger. We're trying to emulate the textures that you would have in the papers and the different kinds of ingredients that might be on your burger. So that's why we tore it. So I've now got my bottom bun and I've got my top bun and I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to do, and I will tell you, some of my kids started at the top, some started at the bottom. I like to start at the bottom. So I'm going to do my bottom piece first. And put that down. I do not suggest you gluing both down. So do one or the other and then go from there. All right, now for the burger time. All right, so 
a couple things to remember. Um, symmetrical shapes are a friend of yours for this project. So kind of keep that in mind. Also remember, you know, if you know that you need three tomatoes, take your paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, only draw it once. Make it easy on yourself. Only draw it once, and then when you cut it out, they all look the same. You're in business, all right? So I know for a fact that I would like to do two patties of meat. So I am going to just kind of cut out what I think the shape would be. And you guys know from eating hamburgers that the meat can be shaped all kinds of different ways. Sometimes it's super flat, sometimes it's kind of thicker. So I'm going to do mine about like that. That's going to be my first piece of meat. And then you always have to have, in my opinion, cheese on top of the meat. So on my cheese, I'll show you a really easy way to do your cheese. Use the corners of your paper. So, and you don't even, it doesn't even take that much. You just cut off a corner and then this is my favorite. Take your hole punch and you're going to punch some holes and kind of do them where they're all together in places and then do some where it's just by itself and then do some more here. Do some on the edges. What am I making? I am making some fabulous looking Swiss cheese. All right, so now I've got, there we go. All right, so I've got my Swiss cheese, and that is going to go on this next layer, so it's going to kind of lay on top like that. Now, I've got some that's sticking off, but I'm not going to worry about that because once I get this glued on, my next layer can kind of overlap that a little bit. That's the other thing is this is all about layering your items. And so in order to make it look, you know, believable, you are going to have some layers that will overlap and lay on top of other layers, just like it does on your burger. And I like that it's coming down even onto the bun. That looks yummy. All right. And then some tomatoes. And because I know that I'm actually going to use tomatoes a couple times, I'm going to take my paper. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold it again. And then I'm going to draw out what I want my tomato to look like. So just kind of an oval shape. And kind of, you know, sometimes too I'll lay it out there and think, ah, that's a little too big. So I'll make it a little smaller. And then cut it out and you've got a couple to work with and you've also got one possibly left over to make a pattern. All right, now the one thing I would say the one thing that makes this project really awesome is it's all in the details. So I could just throw these on here, but if I just throw these on here, they look like pepperonis. So I wanted these to be, and it'd be fine if I wanted them to look like pepperonis, I could just throw them on there and not do anything else to them, but I don't. I want them to look like tomatoes. So I have to think about what could I do to them to make them look you know, a little bit more like a tomato, and I could do it with paper, I could do it with markers, it's kind of up to you how you would like to do it. I think I'm going to come in here with my markers if I can get it to work. And I'm going to kind of, you know how they kind of have these little triangular shapes on the inside. And I'm not being super crazy about getting it exact because a lot of this will get covered up. But it is a really good detail and it's a good thing to add. So I'm going to do that. And remember that the very edge of it is very red. So you don't want to get it all the way to the edges. You want to have the pink be kind of in the middle. And I think I can actually just do, I think I'm just going to do two there. Two tomatoes right there. Here we go. Okay. They've also kind of got some white kind of highlights on there. So I'm going to do those real quick. And then I'm even going to do a little bit of white in the middle. So think about details and things that you could add. This project is so cute that I'm telling you, mom or dad, they're going to want to hang this in the kitchen. It's so cute. So do your best on it so that it looks really nice. All right, so I've got my tomatoes. And the next thing I think I would like to do is I think I would like to do some lettuce. 
Now you can do lettuce several ways. Remember I talked to you about that textured paper that we had before? You can use this, you can cut it into a shape if you would like to. You could do, you know, big like leaf lettuce and cut it into little shapes. But the other thing that I also did was I took my paper and I ran it through the paper shredder. So clean out your paper shredder, really, really good. Get mom and dad to help you. And then you can run green paper through and then you've got shredded up like lettuce. So, but for this, you have to really kind of glob your glue on because it just, because of how thick it is, it kind of, it doesn't like to stick on there very well. So, I'm still dot, dot, not a lotting, but I'm putting a little more than I normally would. And then, as far as this goes, it's not like you want to put a big, huge chunk of it because most of it won't be touching the glue and it won't stay. So, you just kind of want to get like a clump of it. It doesn't have to be too big of a clump to kind of get the idea that it's lettuce and just kind of lay it down in there. And I'm going to do a little bitty bit more. All right, so now I've got my lettuce. And then my next one that I think I would like to do is I'm going to put some eggs on mine. And my husband sometimes gets eggs on his hamburger, so this is a gourmet hamburger for my husband. So I'm making the egg white part. And remember that no two eggs are the same. So make them look different. And then you need the yolk in the middle. So I'm going to take my yellow. I can double that over because the yolk is just kind of a circular, ovally shape. And then I can put this on. All right, and then these are going to go right here. Now, the other thing is you don't always necessarily have to have your pieces lay down totally flat. So my lettuce already gives it some dimensions, so it's kind of popping out off my page. And because my eggs are going to rest on top and overlap, um, it's going to make them stick out a little bit too, and that's fine. I kind of like it looking that way. All right, now. I like to have um, some ketchup on my hamburger, so I'm going to do some ketchup, but I do not want it to be just a flat little strip of ketchup. I want it like oozing and dripping kind of ketchup. So I'm going to, you can draw it out if you'd like to, or if you think you can just cut it out, just cut it out, but you want it to have drips. So that means you'll have kind of peaks and valleys. Ah, scissors are grabbing my paper. All right, so now I've got what kind of looks like this. And it's going to be my ketchup. So, oh, that could also be hot sauce. I could do that too. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and put it on there. All right, next layer. I think I'm going to do some pickles. So I'm going to use my textured paper. I'm going to fold it, fold it. That's probably going to get on there. And then I'm going to cut out my little circular shape for my pickles. And then I'm going to layer those on as well. Now, I mentioned to you earlier about the beans and the rice. And I like to do all of my paper stuff first. And then I come back and I do the rice and the beans and the, the different things like that. And you can do it that way or if you prefer you want to make sure that you've got space for it, you can put those in as well. All right, um, let me see what else. I think it might be time for another piece of meat. And so I'm going to do, this time I've got a darker brown piece of paper just to give it some variety. And I don't think I'm going to make this piece quite as big. I think I'm going to actually kind of put it, tuck it behind there. 
And um, once I get this glued on, the other thing that looks really good is to do the little, with your black marker, the little grill marks on your meat. So you can do little marks that kind of go across. Like it's been grilling. You can even do some that go back across like that. All right, let me see what else. Um, oh, I need some cheese on my meat again. I'm trying to think of something really unusual else I could add to mine. Really? Do I want to just go completely strange? I don't know. I'm debating. And remember, you don't always have to make it Swiss cheese. I just like doing it because I think it's fun. And it's always good to kind of get your corners off a little bit. All right, do this. And I also had some of my kids that decided that they would do like some kind of a themed burger. So like I had kids that had a Asian burger um, they did seafood burgers, so they had all kinds of things on there. I think I'm going to add, all right, this is going to be my weird thing. Are you ready? I think I'm going to do some little anchovies. And I'm going to do my little anchovies. I'm going to fold my paper long ways. And then I'm going to draw my little anchovy. My scissors today, you guys, got a mind of their own. And then on here, I'm going to have to use my markers to kind of sketch out what I want the fin to look like because it won't show up unless I do that. And you might also want to do the eye because people probably will not know what it is unless you put that on there. Oh dear. He's looking kind of cute. That's why I don't like anchovies is because those little fish are kind of cute looking. Then I don't want to eat them and I feel bad. All right, so I'm going to do a little anchovy here. Oh, I like it. I like the anchovies. All right. I'm going to overlap this guy a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to keep going as I'm building my layers. But I want to stop for a second because I want to talk to you about your beans and the rice. Now, I told you about doing the beans and rice, but I didn't exactly say what it was. You might want to do beans on there just for a layer. That was kind of self-explanatory. But the rice can work out for several things. The rice makes really good seeds that go on top of your burger. Um, the, they also make really good, like, diced up um, onions. So you could do it that way. The other thing was the yarn. And the yarn also makes really great onions in the fact that you just take it between your fingers and you just keep rolling this around and around. And it basically just makes it into a little spiral shape. And then your onions can just be these little spirals. And then all you do is just kind of keep holding them with your fingers, kind of like that. I'll go ahead and glue this down. And then um, just put enough glue that it'll kind of grab onto everything, especially the end, and kind of squish this down onto here. So you can do a line of onions that looks really, really good. So you can do a couple of those. Um, the beans, I usually do the beans, like I'll kind of come in where I've got a layer of the meat 
and I'll kind of do my beans like this, but you kind of want to do them side by side and you want to put a little dollop of glue down and then put your bean in it because if you just kind of drizzle it, it doesn't stick very well. So I'm um, going to do that as well. The other thing that I want to mention to you guys before we go to our quote for the day, um, as you're working, there's a couple things that you could do. We talked about the details and things. And um, one thing that you might want to do is on your different objects, you can actually take a marker and go around it. Even if it's the same color, it just adds a little more dimension to your pieces. So like I did, I'll show you my finished one here in a second, but I did, you know, green around here. I did even around the ketchup and it just kind of makes it pop a little bit. So kind of think about that. Our art quote today is by Swedish-American sculptor Klaus Oldenburg. Art is a technique of communication. The image is the most complete technique of all communication. Okay, so I'm going to kind of put this one that I've been working to on to the side for a second. And I'm going to pull over my other one that I've been working on. And I want to show you this one because I want to go over a couple other things. Okay, so in your, in your picture, You've worked on your hamburger. If you have room, you might want to think about down at the bottom, you know the little cups, the little white cups, and then you go squirt the ketchup in there? Would be a great detail to add. So this is my little white cup, and then this is my ketchup that is out, kind of overflowing a little bit. And then these are my crinkle cut french fries. And notice that when I glued them down, there's like space in between here. So I didn't glue them all the way down because they're you know, when you get them, your french fries aren't flat. They are, they're three-dimensional. So they, they stick up and they have things that protrude. So you can do that as well because this is, like I said, this project is all about texture. So we're creating that texture. Um, I mentioned to you right before we went to the quote about re-outlining around things. So you can see like right here around my ketchup and even around the cheese. It just gives it that extra little bit of dimension. And then also on my tomatoes, on this one, I actually cut out, you know, pink paper and I did several layers of paper. So I did my, my tomatoes a little bit differently. Um, I also added on this one, I added some green avocados up here. This right here, this pink right here, this is secret sauce. I could tell you the recipe, but it's a secret. So you might have something like that. And then this is another one of my favorites. This is the bacon. That it's a bacon cheeseburger. So um, this would go on here. And these work really, really well. It's just a strip of paper. You want to put the white part, which is like the fatty part of the bacon. And then don't make it lay down, because bacon is like real crinkly, crumbly. So you want it to be kind of raised up. All right? And then last thing I want to talk to you about, um, I talked to you also about the little seeds. So I did seeds to look like um, like little sesame seeds on my thing. But the last thing I want to talk to you about is this part. And this is, you have to name the place where your burger comes from. And I want you to make a little flag that will go up at the top. And you might want to do, you know, some kind of a you know, accoutrement that goes along with it, if you would like to. I decided to do a lime because I love limes. And then I want you to name the restaurant that will have your extreme burger. So mine is a restaurant called the Blue Dog. So that's mine. And I, you know when you get those hamburgers, like especially the old timey hamburgers, and they've got that toothpick, and it's got that little crinkly, cool stuff up at the top. So I tried to kind of recreate that with mine and I put glitter on it and I frayed the edges so that it looks really, really nice. And then you just put that on a toothpick and then just stick that into the top of your burger. And that just about does it for today. Now the one last thing that I told that I didn't really mention at the beginning, but it's always something that you can kind of add on at the last second, is we wrote a poem to go along with our burger. And so when we got all finished, we had this amazing looking um, collage, and then we had our little poem beside it that talked about our burger, how much it weighs, what ingredients are on it, what the name of the burger is. So you might want to think about doing something like that and being coming up with some kind of a creative writing to go along with your burger. All right, guys and girls, that's it for today. Thank you so much for doing some extreme hamburgers with me today. Now go out and make some amazing art.